Watch the other video in your tabs right there. If it doesn't hype you for FF, play SO. Last attempt here lol. FF14 PvP can be mindless. Watch a vidit. I've seen a vid on FF14, I don't like their PvP at all. FF14 is PvP, they're reworking it soon. If more people actually played it, it wouldn't be as bad, 100%. Alright, you ready? Have you ever had the urge to punch someone in the face? Yeah, me neither. But anyways, yeah. PVP! Now, I know no one really asked or probably even wanted me to talk about this aspect of Final Fantasy XIV, but if you ask anyone that knows me in WoW or even Final Fantasy XIV, you hear that I'm a bit of a PVP person. Granted, I'm a bit of one of the odd bots because I actually enjoy the casual PVP variety, and like Instance Battlegrounds or World PVP or Duels and whatnot. But regardless, my main interest in MMO activities usually hang around the PVP side of things. Yeah, now, so this guy's with like that me. said, okay. if any of you ever play Final Fantasy XIV, I'm sure you all know where I'm getting with this. <laughs> So the general consensus that I've gathered is that the PvP side of this game is one of its weakest points. And after playing it for a few weeks, I think I can see why that is. Though I feel like I have to add that despite that, for the past few weeks, my MSQ progress has been halted entirely because I had gotten distracted by the PvP shenanigans stuff that this game has. So with that said, I feel like I can say that there is still enjoyment to be had from the whole experience. General concepts. So the way the PvP works here is that it's all on a set stat template. Once you're level 30 and upgrade your class to a job, you can participate in all the PvP activities in the game with perfectly even footing. Now, how do you access the PvP in this game? Well, unlike WoW, there is no world PvP in this game, and with that, I, there's also like no dueling in the open areas. But you can duel people. In order to do that, you have to go to a very specific spot in the world, kind of like how the Mugambala and Hookpoint was designed to work as the PvP incentive in WoW, which didn't work very well. Now, where is this said PvP dueling ring? Well, let's make a game of it. Now, here's the map of the general area as to where the- No, can't do Albion. Sorry. Come back to Tarkov. We miss you. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Thank you guys so much for the donations, though. Albion's too bad to play, uh, like, as a streamer. It's just impossible. The dueling ring resides. I'd like you to take a guess as to where it might be. Now, if you pick this location over here, then you're absolutely dead wrong because our dueling ring is all the way in the middle of the ocean! I know how we wild <laughs> folks tend to like to say that PvP doesn't get enough attention from the devs, but good god, dudes. This takes it to a whole nother level. You have to go so far out of your way to unlock the small PvP zone over here by doing a quest that takes you to another middle of nowhere place to sell all the way over here. So, yeah. So after you get to the Loner's Pier, you'll realize that your abilities seem to be a little bit different. Because they are. <laughs> Just about every ability in the game is adjusted to meet the PvP template standards. So that means you have to go through all your abilities again to see what changed. Also, you, you access these PvPified abilities in the PvP profile tab, not the usual abilities tab you go to in literally anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Something else you'll need to get used to, which applies to the PvE side as well, is the animation locks you have to account for in combat. I didn't really mention this in the other video because, well, it's like flat out just forgot it um but every ability has some sort of animation lock before it's visually executed now with that said that kind of automatically implies that you're not going to be getting the fast super responsive plays that you have in wow where you cast an instant cast ability and you can rely on it getting cast instantly uh, here you're gonna have to get a lot more premeditated with your things in this game because as soon as you use the ability it technically has gone through in the system but you don't really see the results until after the animation has ended. Sometimes the animation lock flat out blocks you from using another ability until it finishes its thing too, depending on what you play. So there's quite a few things to keep note of there. There's also this weird, almost permanent lag that's really apparent in duels especially. It makes overall reactive plays almost impossible to really do in time and makes the game more of a fight of premeditation and anticipation more than an actual bar brawl that duels tend to be in WoW. Community! Uh -oh. Oddly enough, one of the main reasons that I believe PvP is on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of content, and personally I think is the biggest reason, is because that, well, there just isn't that huge of a PvP community in comparison to other things. Should I have even heard that the ERP community in this game is bigger than the PvP community? Well, actually, now that I think about it, it kind of makes sense, because... 
Playboy. Fundamentally, you kind of need people playing it for it to really be a thing because you can't really do PvP by yourself. It's just kind of how it works. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's entirely dead. The casual form of big group PvP called Frontlines has a pretty decently active player base, mostly because it's the only PvP event that has a daily roulette attached to it. So you get both the PvP folks and the normal folks hopping in for some quick fun. Bad, but outside man. of Frontlines, yeah, the PvP community is really small and the dedicated PvP player base is even smaller. And I know you WoW folks are probably thinking you'll see a whole bunch of the community is so great and nice type of thing despite its size. Well, you might get that the first few days of doing it, but after around a week of hanging around the dueling area, well, eventually you'll run into the more normal PvP crowd that you all are probably more accustomed to. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit more team than Dual Altar. I haven't really seen anyone sell people over their IRL profession choices, personal financial standing, or overall life worth based on rating yet. But since the community is yes, world smaller than really WoW's, cool, fighting words tend to have a bit more of a personal touch today. to them here. That is when people actually show up. Dueling! So as mentioned before, you can only really duel in this one very specific part of the game. The place is way off to the east in the Loner's Pier, and it's a square-shaped arena with four corner walls in the corners of the ring and a pillar on the northern and southern ends to use as line of sight material. Honestly, dueling is one of my favorite activities in MMOs in general. So this is kind of the place I tend to hang around often by default nowadays. Unfortunately though, a good majority of my experiences in the dueling ring lead to either me standing by myself at the pier or me standing by myself while staring at a bunch of people staring at me just outside of the dueling pier. And those get a little awkward. However, when I do get around to dueling, I always end up having a good time, win or lose. Occasionally, Look at that apparently, idiot. Um, there will even be he some events every now and then at the dueling ring where some players will host a tournament for other people to go through and the winner gets some type of big old prize. And that's when the dueling ring is like the most packed I ever see. It is a nice change of pace. However, they can get a little wild. <laughs> Frontlines! So yeah, I heard about that game a lot. Out there, these are the battlegrounds of Final Fantasy XIV, and the game modes you play on them are pretty neat with some of the mechanics. They're also one of the most common PvP modes I play, mostly because it's the only one anyone queues for. But essentially, they're pretty similar in size to an Altric Valley or Isle of Conquest in WoW. But instead of a 40 versus 40 team, it's a 24 versus 24 versus 24. Yeah, you heard me. It's three teams of 24 people each. So the overall atmosphere and general tactics people incorporate into this game is a bit different than WoW since hey, they have to think about that second I can't start playing EVE I personally don't mind it. in 2021 is my first time. Bit of spice I get, compared oh. to the usual two team type of matches I'm used to in, well, also, I'm not a smart guy, so. Too. There's also this baseline mechanic across all front lines and where we're killing someone yields your team five points and dying loses your team five points. So basically, you're just like stealing five points from another team and it really encourages both button mashes slaying and cautious introverted avoidance. Now, as interesting as an idea as it is, Unfortunately, there just isn't really a wide variety of front lines to choose from. Whereas in a while, you have Warsong Gulch, Arathi Basin, Alteric Valley, Eye of the Storm, Strand of the Ancient, oh wait, Isle of Conquest, Battle for Gilneas, Twin Peaks, Silver Shard Mines, Temple of Kalmogu, Deepwind Gorge, and Seething Shore. Final Fantasy XIV has Borderland Ruins, Seal Rock, Fields of Glory, and Onsar Hakir. Yeah, when you put them side by side, there's like no comment really needed as to who has more PvP things to do. But let me make things a little bit spicier for you. The front lines are actually time locked to where you can only do one type of front line each day. And they currently cycle through them every day. So if the limited variety wasn't enough, you're forced to pick only one type of front line per day. And you can't even choose Dude. which one. It's Final Fantasy hates PvP. And guys, this is actually better than when I started doing the PvP thing. Because I started playing pretty much a few weeks before the current season started. And apparently that cycling thing gets turned off entirely when it's that late into the PvP season. So I was stuck with doing nothing but Onsar Hakir over and over and over for a few weeks until this season started. And oh boy, was it a breath of fresh air to not see Onsar again. I'll tell you that much. There are some other interesting baseline rules that applies to all front lines as well. One that I particularly 
really like is this battle high mechanic where you do more damage and healing the more you fill up this bar over here. And the way you fill it up is by either getting killing blows or assists. So it actually strongly encourages you to be aggressive. And I think it's really neat. Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll work well if implemented in WoW because, well, if someone's going like 22 and 0 in a battleground, then he's already either got a strong gear advantage, a solid skill advantage, a group of pocket healers, really lucky, or all of the above. And super boosting someone with that type of advantage is probably not the best idea. You also get an extremely <laughs> punishing slow for 10 seconds if you get hit while mounted. So despite being able to mount You look like you're doing you want, really you good. You're 20 and 0. Thing We're going to give you 10% more damage. Just scratch a bit of that normal battleground itch that I tend to crave, and it's really easy to just hop in and get right into it after you get reacquainted with your PvP setup, that is. You son of a bitch! It can also be a super solid way to level up any of your jobs, because the first frontline rule that you do in the day is like a guaranteed half a level. No matter so you got 2,000 hours and 14 so PvP just ain't it, man. I know, dude. We're just having fun with this. Solid DXP boost it's the first time I've ever really seen, like, on. other you PvP than this one arena. Like, that's just flat out normal. And if you so win, it's like many fucking extra. extra. Flash good stuff. Off. In fact, that's kind of how I have this many high-level jobs without having completed Stormblood yet. So that's always a bonus. Rival Wings! So, this is pretty much a MOBA, but you're in it as an MMO pleb. I really, really wish I could show some footage of it, but for some reason, I decided not to record any of my ventures in there. But some of you may be thinking, well, just queue for it and get in it again. And to you, I respond, I tried. <laughs> I tried. The only sure, reason I was able I to get in in the first the place was because there was an event going on and people had to collect these irregular tombstone things to buy limited time items. Rival <laughs> Wings was one of the things they could do to collect these things. So there was an actual incentive to queue for it. That event I mentioned is now ended. And so the Rival Wings queue just seems to be just permanently dead now until they do something like that again, at least. Feast! So this is the rated arena in Final Fantasy XIV, and to you WoW folks, it an awesome it's pretty different from the arenas you're used to. Whereas in WoW, you had 2v2s and 3v3s. Here, <laughs> it's a 4v4 situation, where you also have to have a specific group combination to enter. The goal is to collect more medals than the enemy team by the end of the timer, or until you collect 600 medals in order to win. Yes, you heard me. It's not specifically just a one life death match like it is in WoW. Though it technically falls under the death match category since the only way to collect medals is by killing someone and grabbing their medals. But even so, you can still theoretically lose even if you get more kills than the enemy team. And another thing, CC just is actually is very no sparse in this game. Zone. Tanks have a stun, healers have a sleep, beautiful. physical ranged but DPS have a silence, and melee so DPS don't have anything outside of the ninja's so. half second silence. It gets a bit more varied with caster DPS. Like I know, Black I've seen mages it have an AoE sleep, red mages have a root and a slow, and summoners have a stun. And keep in mind, every single stun, sleep, and silence of the like lasts only two seconds. That's all Thank you, Zay. Appreciate it, man. I know, so I do know that. Literally like the one boosting. or two hits in before they're out of the CC. So you don't get a lot of time at all. So if you're expecting a full on like triple poly combo and just triple cyclones to a full kidney in order to lock down the healer to just annihilate late the rest of his team here prepare to either be disappointed or pleasantly pleased depending on how you see the cc situation and wow because that's not really gonna happen to that extreme though i have to say that the primary tactic does land in the same vein as that but if both dps burst a target with zero cc applied anywhere the healer and the kill target can still live through it with the use of defensives burst healing on the healer's part <laughs> and defensive stunts and aoe mitigation on the tank's part and when it comes to those instances then it's mostly just a mind game with the enemy healer as to who are going to burst down next so you'll be switching targets like a madman just to throw the healer off another interesting thing that i was not expecting in a pvp environment that's so communication heavy is that you can't actually type anything to anyone when you're in the feast you get these preset commands to use to tell who's going to be going down when and the one you'll see the most often is focus target and they'll pull down like a countdown timer of five four three two one and when it hits zero everyone goes in and bursts them really handy but another one i see used a lot is hello and nice job where they will just spam the crap out of that when you ended up dying for a reason that may or may not be your fault <laughs> yeah there is a level of toxicity in this game <laughs> hold on so turns out that hello 
is the feast lingo for my verse is ready. And it took me way too long to figure this out. If anyone is watching who has any connection with Square Enix employees, please, if anything, just let them add a new quick chat command where it just says my verse is ready instead of people saying hello. Because new players like me, I thought it was being toxic. And that's not a good impression for trying to get people into a community that's already at the size of the online people. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that'd be great if first, they that but it change. doesn't take long to get I'm not, yeah, I don't think I'm built for that, man. But despite the fact that the community is as small as it is, I was actually able to get into some rated feast matches because this game has solo queue. And it's because of that one reason that I was able to accrue the footage that you see now. Square Enix, you may not be doing all that hot when it comes to handling your PvP situation, but I gotta give you some props for making solo queue exist. Cause good Lord, man, it, it's definitely helped my experience with the uh, accessing PvP in this game. Kind of. All right, so I'm gonna go back to bashing the dang thing by saying just holy. 47 God, minutes PvP he's just been completely chilling. Dies at the end of a PvP season. When I was trying to queue for the feast before this current season started, there was just not a chance in the world I was getting in that business. But anywho, that kind of about covers the gist of it for PvP. I can go into detail in several of the things I've mentioned here, but I think I'll reserve that for another time. Personally, my thoughts on the whole thing with this. That's fair. Uh, that was a good video. Uh, you'll be happy to know that there has been talk about them revamping the PvP system. Not sure when or how, but it's gonna be a thing. All the competitive people in this game are probably uh, doing crafting PvP for uh, Ishgardian and Restoration rankings at the moment. As someone who's played it for 14 for years, we have Dueling Ring? <laughs> uh, oh, man. Man, I don't fucking chat. This videos, these videos aren't helping me. That, that video basically says PvP is, like, not the worst thing ever, but it does kind of suck a little bit. So that guy actually kind of convinced me that PvP wasn't the worst thing ever, um, to be honest.